Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And we have seen some key moves officially on the 10th of April. We learned that Christine Sandler from Coinbase is going to leave and move over to Fidelity Digital Assets. And then today, the former PayPal and Google engineer executive, Mike Blandia, he is joining the trading custody platform, Backed. And two days ago, the president, Mr. Jessup of Fidelity Digital Assets, uploaded a recruitment video. So he's getting very serious to go into full swing, which I'm very excited about. I think it would be a super fun company to work for. They have a strong brand behind them, of course. He talks about their operational excellence and their uh, having the brightest minds in crypto. They just impressed me because they are a very old company in a very conservative space. And the fact that they are able to keep up in this very innovative, fast changing space is impressive. So it, he says here at the end of his video that if you have a self starting attitude and love to go down the rabbit hole, then come work for them. Okay, this is a very important page and it finally got up on the Ripple Insights. It's two videos that I've been talking about. It's the brand new partners that are in the Southeast region of uh, Asia and they are um, in Malaysia and Thailand. And I think if you wanna see what is happening with 50% of the customers coming from this region, uh, this is a great page to access, not only to see the short videos, but they provided some great text to go along with it. So I'm going to put a link to this in the description as well. And boy, oh boy, yesterday, I sure didn't expect this. I got a, um, a couple of tweets from Galgatron. And I think that in, in the uh, exercise of thinking that I wanted to do with the World Economic Forum article was taken maybe a little bit in the wrong way, because I agree with Galgatron that Currently, right now, XRP doesn't fit the criteria to be a, um, a, a reserve currency for the IMF. And maybe in the future, I don't know, maybe if it becomes in a basket of currencies and it is tokenized that way, maybe. But I think all by itself, I, I don't believe so. So if I alluded to that yesterday, I didn't uh, mean it that way. And here I do want to show you, though, a brand new um, thought process. First, here's just a little side note. Um, Max Kaiser, who I really enjoy watching his videos, he thinks that Bitcoin will be the new world reserve currency invariably. I just don't know about that either because when you read a new white paper that came out from the World Economic Forum, I think you're going to see where their head is at. And I can show you the actual paper here. They have been really working hard studying this space since 2014 and there's 60 research papers to date. This one, which was completed and uploaded on the 3rd of April, has really good outline of 10 use cases for DLT. And the, of course, uh, central bank digital coin money flower graphic is very telling to how they are most likely going to move forward. So I will let you read this if this interests you. And then to complement this reading, it's only 14 pages, it go, you can get through it very uh, quickly. There is also a report that came out from the Bank of International Settlements in January, and they also are talking about proceeding with caution and it's a survey on central bank digital currency. So these two papers, I think, are the best ways to study and understand what they are thinking and how they are going to proceed. Okay, this is so interesting. This is a presentation that Ripple had for an event that took place in Zurich, Switzerland on August 24th. It's the um, Fidesz Global Multi-Banking Solutions 
um, company that's actually owned by Credit Suisse. They had this event and I had never seen this slide before. And wow, I don't know. I'm looking for some feedback of what you think. So here we have, of course, the global map. This is the uh, representation of X Rapid, and it's sitting here in uh, California. And then you can see what looks to be like corridors. And within the corridors, sometimes you'll have just a bank with what looks like stacks of, uh, which I assume is, is uh, the digital assets here, XRP. And then sometimes you have a corridor that actually brings you to a bank with the assets and a Ripple logo. So maybe possibly this is a liquidity provider. Um, that's what I'm asking if anybody wants to leave me a comment what they think the difference is between when you see just a bank or when you see a bank and the, and the uh, Ripple logo. And then if you come down here to South America, you can see we've got just two single logos by themselves, but not with a bank. So there's no legend, and I can't tell what this is exactly, but I'd love to hear, uh, I'd love to hear everybody's opinion. Okay, there is another big summit. This is a conference that takes place in uh, San Francisco. It's five days long. Can you believe that? Uh, it's a global conference that has some big names. Of course, the biggest in the industry, SoftBank, BlackRock, Credit Suisse, Goldman, JP Morgan. Ripple is a sponsor. Some of the speakers are uh, ambassadors, CEOs, central banks, even people from the White House, and a real princess from Libya. Christine Lagarde is going to be the guest speaker, so we will uh, again be able to hear her thoughts in where she is um, moving next. So it takes place on April 27th to May 5th, and I'm really happy to see Ashish Birla. It seems like we haven't heard from Ashish for the longest time, and he must be down some rabbit hole, but it'll be nice to get some uh, current video to uh, what he's talking about these days. And talking about talking, <laughs> David uh, uploaded a video on a new YouTube channel. What a big surprise and what a nice surprise. Um, David, you are so enjoyable to listen to. I think you need to do more of these. This really suits you and it fits your uh, tongue-in-cheek humor and it's perfect platform it feels so intimate I love it please make more um, the reason why everybody he did this is he explains that uh, he didn't join the ILP summit because he had a little eye surgery and his eye is healing well he sees better than ever and I'm really happy to hear that so um, yeah, so nice to hear that you're recovering well. So the Ripple 2019 Q1 All Hands event he missed, but he gives his presentation in this video. It's very short, just like two minutes and 50 seconds, about two minutes and 50 seconds. Yeah, um, it's a must watch because he talks uh, about uh, gaming and that MMORPG, which is the massively multiplayer online role playing game. And I'm no, based on what he, uh, talked about in, in using that metaphor as, uh, the teams that go forward in, in, in everyday battle that we all battle. We all are in, uh, some sort of battle with other team members, whether it's, uh, in the real world or, in uh, his case, I'm sure he has many hours in the virtual world. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, very enjoyable to hear that um, relationship and his also his message to the um, his team members that uh, he wasn't able to join. But anyway, David, more videos, please. Okay, we are jumping to the fluff. So we're going to stick with games here, and I want to talk about the number one uh, in-app 
mobile game here for two years in a row. Actually, it launched in 2013, but it has been number one for two years in a row. It's called Monster Strike, and it is a monster. They have grossed more than 1.3 billion US dollars. They have 49 million users, and it's they also had it part of the esports tournament that took place in October this last 2018. So you can catapult creatures across the screen and defend and collect uh, your enemies, monsters. It's not a massively multiplayer game. It's just like one to four people. So it's a little bit on a smaller scale, but it's incredibly popular here. It didn't really pick up steam in the West, which is kind of interesting, but that could be just the difference of culture. Here is one of the most popular characters. Uh, she is a two blade wielding um, part of the samurai clan. You can see here she has her um, dragon uh, guardian spirit and she is part of the restoration revolution and she's a very strong female character that has anti gravity capabilities and uh, along with um, some critical skills that make her a powerful character. So I really, I really like her. I, I love all the graphics in this um, game, actually. And so when we um, look at some YouTube channels that are in this space, there are some girls that have an amazing YouTube channel. This is something they uploaded 15 hours ago and they had 119,000 viewers already. And one of their videos was really popular a day ago. It already has a half a million views. And here they are for three hours. Can you believe that? Actually, almost four hours, three hours and 55 minutes. They're sitting there having a pizza party with their friends watching the game. <laughs> so they just they comment they chit chat they eat and they watch their games as they film so fun huh it's really funny so i got to thinking about you know heroes or characters or or uh, people that we follow that are kind of the um, in the battle of of life that are characters we um, idolize and of course in the Edo period which took place from the 1600s to the mid 1800s they had their own characters and stories and battles and this is one that was created by a very famous ukiyo-e artist ukiyo-e are woodblock Prince, and his name is Kuniyoshi Utagawa. He lived uh, from 1798 to 1861. And the genre that he did had some 108 hero series. And they're very unique because they all had tattoos and they would uh, fight the strong for the weak. So it was a form of kind of um, battle heroes, if you will. And they uh, were, I don't know, maybe similar to like a Robin Hood, um, but they were hired tough guys. So if you needed to settle some sort of um, problem that you had, you could use them as a strong arm or to send a message. And the stories behind each were fun and interesting and unique. And you can still actually buy these today. The museum in Boston, the, what is it? The, um, the Fine Art Museum in Boston. And also there's a museum in Toronto and also a museum in the British Museum. They have large collections of this artist, probably the largest collections outside of Japan, but you can even find the original works still on eBay. And, and they're not that crazy. Uh, depending on condition and depending on subject matter, somewhere around $100 to about eight or $900. And the sheets of paper will be close to like A4 size. Anyway, I just want to show you some of the characters here. Here's another um, fully tattooed character with his sword in his mouth and one more 
Yeah. Interesting, huh? I love them. I just think they're, I just think they're wonderful. So, uh, the modern day hero in Japan could possibly be this kabuki actor, Ebizo. He has a very strong fan base and here he is actually acting out a traditional play about the Otoko Date, which are the, um, from the series of those 108 heroes that were created by Utagawa. And they have um, one of the traditional kabuki plays about one of the strong men. And I, I haven't seen it. I'd love to see it. But here you have not only the play about the Edo period um, hero, but you have a hero playing him as well. So who is your hero? I did a uh, search on the top 50 heroes in the West, and it breaks down to a very interesting um, division. 14 out of the 50 are politicians, 15 are activists, 10 come from the arts, whether it be musicians, writers, or personalities. Three, only three are entrepreneurs. Five are either scientists or from some academic background. Two are royalty and just one is a sports athlete. So just by a hair, the activists edge out all of the groups to be the most popular for today's hero. So if you want to share your hero, I'd love to read about it in the comment section. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Sayonara for now. Take care. Bye-bye.